Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. Today is stage five of the Walta Catalonia. Right away, guys, when I come down this morning and I flip on the computer, it's a big break. We're talking 10, 15 guys up the road is what I'm watching immediately. It's just under 60K to go. Shortly after that, they bring the helicopter camera angle back, and it's like 40 guys back there chasing. I mean, it's a massive break of the day on a very long stage. It's 200K, 125 miles, for sure mass chaos for the first two or three hours of today's stage. There's no doubt about it. When we're watching from 60K to the finish, we miss the best part of the bike racing, really. Unless you're a Bora Hansgrohe fan, the best part of the bike racing is this first two hours because it's mass chaos back there. The directors in the car have probably the hardest job in the world at this particular moment because with every different attack that's going up the road, they have to relay to the race leaders to, of course, we'll take Inos for example. The director back there has to know immediately who's in, who's in what break every moment of the race and relay it as fast as he can to his race leader, Adam Yates, or their team captain on the road. This needs to be done quick. When the, a stage like today is starts, you know that a break is going all the way to the line because it's not a summit finish. Guys are way down on GC. It's not flat enough for a sprinter's teams to want to control the whole stage of 200K. So a break is going. Everybody knows it, and that's why it's so big on today's stage. The director back there, every time a new break forms and gets brought back, the next one forms, he's got to know who it is. He's got to relay it right away to Adam Yates, and they have to decide on the road immediately if they want to start chasing. This is very difficult. I've had it once in my career where a big break went up the road. I wasn't for sure. I was race leader, but I wasn't for sure who was in there. I couldn't grab all the names and the numbers on the back of the riders when they're passing by. And finally, I just put my team on the front. We drove it and we brought it back. Come to find out, I had Floyd Landis up there, who was a race leader and best guy in that break. We didn't even have to chase, but we did because the radio stopped working. We just didn't know and we had to drill it. Today, with Ineos Grenaderas, Adam Yates is in a great spot because he knows he has at least a minute to a minute and a half lead on most guys, okay? So he's got to keep his eye out for fourth through 10th and make sure those guys don't go. And then he's got a buffer. So he, they got a little bit of delay, but you don't want to be chasing 20, 25 man break if they're working well together. That's the big question, if they're working well together. Anytime you see a group of 40, 15, 20, 25 man break, they're never working well together. They almost never do. The only exception can be if you have two guys that are sitting maybe 15th or top 10 on GC and they had three or four teammates with them in a break of that size, what would happen? Let's say we'll call it the Kuna quick step and Almeida gets in the break and he has four guys in there. He's going to put those four guys and he's going to drive it as hard as he can. But it will never be 50 or 30 or 25 guys rotating through smoothly. It never happens. I've never seen it in my career. So, Enos Granadares, main thing, keep an eye out, make sure there's no one in the top 10. They did that. They got one guy at four minutes in there, Markel Biscara, and he's the biggest threat, Escatel Eskidi rider. But he's a little bit back on GC, and he doesn't have teammates in there that can just drive this thing and really extend it out to that six, 10-minute lead. So Ineos Grenadiers, they're going to have to do a lot of work because they're going fast. But remember, the first part of the race, they're just following the flow of the attacks. All the attacks are so big that they just follow the next group of teams that missed it. When the next break goes, one, whatever team missed that one, they're going to try it. They're going to bring it back and they're going to follow that. So for the first two hours, it's very complicated, stressful, but Probably Ineos wasn't spending two hours on the front at that particular point in time. So when the break finally goes, Ineos is probably the more rested of all the teams back there because they were just switching from team to team as the breaks were trying to form up the road and they weren't actually touching the win. Once they get on the front, they do a great job. Same MO that we've seen already in the earlier stages. Luke Rowe, Rowan Dennis, and Jonathan Castor Viejo are doing the majority of the work. Watched all day, 
from the last 60K to go, I never even saw Adam Yates, Richie Port, or Garrett Thomas even have to ride the front today. So they're looking fantastic. That's the emergency card. The other emergency card that Ineos has on a stage like today, it's a Cat 1 climb near the finish. They'll summit it with 25K to go. So whatever time the break may be gaining, if those three Ineos riders cannot keep it in control, when they get on that last climb, you can always have Richie Port and G. Thomas light it up that last climb and bring down a huge amount of minutes before they crest with 25K to go, and then it's a downhill run, so they're not going to lose much time at that particular point in time. So Adam Yates is in a great seat. He can sit back and relax, stay with his team, but you still got to get through those first two hours of stress. Up the road, what's happening? You got a group of 10, 15. You got another group of 30 or 40 chasing each other. Remy Cavagna, the de Kunic quick step rider who we've all seen the last couple of years just putting in attack after attack. He jumps with just over 50K to go and he's going solo. And because we see this guy all the time, we know he could possibly make it. The reason he doesn't make it is because it's Kofidis, Frances de Jour, and of course, Israel Startup Nation riders on the front. You'll see those three rotating through hard to try to keep Remy Cavagna close. And the Dakunic Quick Step riders are sitting fourth, fifth, and sixth back there. And they're just patrolling the front of the group, trying to slow it down so Remy has more of a chance to make it over this climb. And then, of course, to the finish for the win. When they hit the final climb, the Cat 1 climb there, it's Movistar on the front drilling it. They don't have great guys, but they got one Carlos Verona, and he puts on a fabulous show today. When we're going up that climb, and after that climb, there's really three guys I want to highlight. Steven Kreiswick was great. Carlos Verona from Movistar was great. And, of course, Leonard Kamna. Now, we've talked about Leonard Kamna here at Catalonia many times. Stage one, he was in the break. Was going for time there, trying to win the stage. Got neither. Stage four, he was solo. Again, trying to win the stage. That wasn't going to happen because it was a GC fight. But now there's no GC fight. He's got great legs, and he's one of the three best riders up there. And all three of these guys are up the road trying to keep away from the break. But again, it's back there. Bike Exchange really doing the damage for Dion Smith to try to bring these three guys back. They get caught. We'll see Verona throw in multiple attacks. Leonard Kamna, Stephen Kreswick, they all do more, more attacks before we get to the finish. And then with 7.5K to go, this is the dagger that really wins the stage. Leonard Kamna times it right again, flies away when they're playing a little cat and mouse back there, gets that gap. Now all he's hoping for is in the back that they're going to not work well together, and they don't because, again, Bike Exchange Deion Smith is back there, and he's the fastest guy. Nobody wants to go to the line with Deion Smith. Deion Smith is really the one who messes up all the chemistry back there because of his speed. That gives Leonard Kamna time to finally get in the super tuck at 70K an hour when you're in the super tuck position. If they hesitate back there at all at those kind of speeds, that gap extends in an instant and he's gone. So he rides in for a beautiful win, well-deserved his third big stage effort out of these first five stages here at Catalonia and it brings him the win. Bora Hansgro. Great job, Leonard Kamna, fabulous to watch today's stage. Now, when we got tomorrow's stage, it's another 200K stage coming up. So, should be a lot of the same that we saw today. Attacks going left and right. The one big difference is a lot of guys will be tired after today's stage. So, we might not see the break take off two or three hours from the start. It might actually go a little bit earlier because guys are just so tired and bam, they get in the move and that's established. As far as the GC favorites go on tomorrow's stage, though, with a Cat 1 nearer the finish than today's stage, today being 25K from the finish, tomorrow's more like 13, 15K from the finish. If this Cat 1 is really difficult, watch for the favorites to really start drilling each other and try to get some kind of damage done on the top 10 general classification. Remember, everybody's not just racing for first. There's a tight battle back there between 4th, 5th, and 6th. And of course, it's still fairly close between the top 10 all the way up to second place on GC. So if you can get a little gap, it's possible a podium might, may open up or you're just moving from 6th to 4th on general classification. Could be a good stage because we could have two battles going on with the break in front and the GC guys battling right at the end of tomorrow's stage. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys real soon.